Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at how to do a BIOS flash on the MSI B450 Pro Carbon Max Wi-Fi. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video we're going to go through how to perform a USB BIOS flash on our MSI B450 Pro Carbon Max Wi-Fi. This is a relatively straightforward task and uh, we've done it a few times before, but there is a good reason why we're doing this. Uh, this is actually a used board which we've picked up and also we do have a new Ryzen 5 5600G which is from the 5000 series. This board released with 3000 series BIOS, so there's a very strong chance we're going to need to update it. And to be honest with you, it's probably best to do it now before we actually build up the system just to make sure everything is A-OK -okay before we proceed with that. So what are we going to need? So you're going to need a power supply to actually power the motherboard. So you will need one with a 24 pin power connection to go into the motherboard and also a four pin connection for EPS power. You can use an eight pin if you want to. You don't need to populate all of them. Just a four pin is absolutely fine or eight pin, depending which you have. You will also need a USB drive. This needs to be formatted FAT32 and ideally less than 32 gigabytes in size. You can, if you want to, actually use a larger drive and create a smaller partition and then make that FAT32. Although in my experience, although at a kind of last resort measure, you can get away with it, the reliability isn't always there, depending on your motherboard. Now, when it comes to compatibility, I find with these particular boards from MSI and also some Gigabyte boards as well, that the SanDisk drives are absolutely brilliant. The SanDisk Flare models, which is ones which I generally use for pretty much every BIOS flash and they work really, really well. I'll put a link for those in the video description as well. So if you want to pick one of those up, they are extremely cheap and it's always worth having one in your toolkit. Other things you'll need, obviously motherboard itself and somewhere to actually assemble it on. I'm just going to use the box that it came in, which is uh, going to be pretty okay for anti-static purposes. Obviously, if you want to, you can get an anti-static mat, a wrist strap and all that kind of good stuff. That is entirely down to you. Also, you'll need a power cable to actually power your power supply. Potentially, you could also have your CPU handy, just if you want to test after, just to make sure that the boss is taken and the CPU is working. But in this particular instance, we won't worry about that too much. Now, if you're actually doing this with a fully assembled system, because you've got to the point where it won't boot, I would strongly recommend, at the very minimum, removing your RAM sticks, if you've got those installed, and potentially your graphics card, depending on how easy that is going to be to do. You can, if you want to, leave the CPU actually in place. And if you've got elaborate water cooling, that sort of stuff, or you just don't have any thermal paste, you don't want to disturb your CPU cooler, then you can leave those on there. But certainly do remove the RAM and basically get anything which will allow the system to try and boot. Obviously, M.2 drives and SATA drives can be disconnected also. So with all that said, let's get on with it. The first thing we're going to need to do is to actually format our USB drive and download the latest BIOS. So we're going to plug in our drive. Now, this one actually is one I used previously on another MSI board, so there is actually data on this one. If you've got any data which you need to keep, you can just drag it to your desktop or something for safekeeping. But we do need to format this drive, so we're going to right-click on our USB drive. Going to go into Format. And in here, you can see the capacity. FAT32 is what we want it to be, so make sure it's FAT32. XFAT will not work. It will not recognize an XFAT drive, and it won't recognize an NTFS drive. It does have to be FAT32 at the most. FAT16 will be okay as well also. Allocation size, I'm just going to set to the default. And if there's anything in the volume label here, I would remove that. That does seem to help. Uh, we're going to provide a quick format as well. So we're going to click on start. Get a message saying, are you sure you want to go ahead and do this? Yes, we do. And there we go. Format is complete. So now we can close that. If we open up our computer again, USB drive is completely empty. So that is excellent. So the next thing to do is to actually obtain the BIOS. Now I'll be putting some links in the video description to get this a little bit easier for you. If you're not sure, just go to Google, type in the name of the motherboard, go to the MSI site, as you can see here. And what you want to do is at the top, you've got these tabs, just choose the support tab. If you're not entirely sure which BIOS you actually need, you can go to the compatibility tab and in the CPU section, just type in your CPU in the top here. So let's go 5600G. And as you can see, this one requires at least BIOS version 26. So what we can do now is go to drivers and downloads, go to BIOS, which is already there. And we can scroll down to see which one 26 is. Now in this particular instance, it's an interesting one because version 26 does not actually exist. It was released, but then was removed from the system 
due to incompatibility or issues with uh, reliability, etc. So in which case you'd go for 27 as being the next best one. Personally, I would say your best bet is to go for the very latest one. This very latest one for this particular board actually has the AGISA code 1.2.0.7, which is the latest version. It also does things like update the default setting to secure boot. So if you're installing Windows 11, that's gonna be absolutely fine. So this is the one we wanna get. So we're gonna to go to download, save it to somewhere we can find easily. So I'm just gonna save it to our desktop. Whilst that's done, we can minimize this window. And there is our zipped file. Now this is a really important bit. You do have to extract the file properly. So I would use the Windows built-in tool, if at all possible. WinRAR and 7-Zip uh, sometimes don't have the same, I don't know what it is, but I've found issues with that before. So I'm gonna use the Windows tool. I'm just gonna choose Extract All. And it's gonna ask for a destination, so we might as well do it to the desktop so we can find it nice and easily. Click on Extract and you'll get a new folder. And also inside the folder, we should find our two files. One of which is a text document, giving you information about the BAS file. And the next one is the actual BAS file itself. You can tell if this is gonna be correct or not because the file size should be approximately 32 megabytes, so 32,000 kilobytes, so that is absolutely fine. Now something which is also very important, we do need to rename this file. So in order to do that, you do have to make sure that you can actually see hidden items and file name extensions. So now we can see our file name extensions and we can rename it. So just click on it once or twice, so it's highlighted like this. Delete everything which is there and just type in MSI, then a full stop, then ROM. You can do this in upper or lower case, doesn't appear to make any difference. Do it however you see fit, I've done it in both ways and it works absolutely fine. Once you're happy that you've got it in there right, just press OK or enter, and you'll get a message saying if you change the file name extension, it may become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes, we are, so we'll click on yes, and there we go, so that is our ROM file. Now we can put this onto our USB stick. So you can either choose to left click and drag it into your USB drive or highlight it, choose copy, go to your USB drive, right click and choose paste. It's totally up to you, however you do it, as long as you've got it on the drive. Ideally it wants to be in the root of the drive. So as you go into the USB drive, it's the first file actually in the directory. So now we can eject that drive and get over to the system and get ready to start flashing. Okay, so now we're ready to flash our bath. So we're gonna get everything ready. So we've got our power supply. Uh, I've changed away from the other one I had previously because it's a little bit janky. So this is a nice little Cooler Master one. We are gonna be needing our eight pin or four pin EPS connection. We also connected up our 24 pin power connection. Obviously motherboard onto a nice box, that sort of thing. Got our USB drive and ideally set it up so that you're not gonna be disturbed or you can leave it to do its thing and that sort of stuff. And obviously if you can, using a UPS or some sort of interrupted power supply is beneficial if something should go wrong. Although realistically, the whole point of having the MSI BAS flash thing is to recover from bad flashes or to actually upgrade a flash. So yeah, shouldn't be a problem. So we've got our USB drive. So we're gonna stick that into the port on the back. So we know which one that is. It is the one on the bottom. Again, if you're not too sure, look at your IO shield. It's clearly marked on there which one is the correct one. So it's the bottom one next to the actual USB flash button. So we'll leave that installed. We're now gonna plug in our EPS eight pin, which goes into the top of the motherboard. Make sure that's pushed in firmly. Also, we're gonna use our 24 pin on the connector at the back. Make sure that's all connected. Power supply, make sure that is turned off currently. Reason for that is what I like to do sometimes, and whether it helps, I don't know, but I like to do it. And that is just to remove the CMOS battery. So we're gonna flip the battery out, take the battery out for a few seconds. At this point, you can, if you want to, press the power button on the motherboard to short out with uh, your screwdriver or something. And that'll basically discharge all the capacitors and everything in the system and reset the CMOS back to whatever factory defaults it might be. That bit is entirely optional, entirely up to you. If for some reason your flash doesn't go well, then it might be worth trying it. Once you've done that, stick your BIOS battery back in. And uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much ready to go. So now we can turn on the power on our power supply. So that's ready to go. And now all we need to do is hope for some luck and press the BIOS button. I normally like to press in for like two or three seconds just to make sure that it has actually registered. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So one, two, three, and release. 
Now it may not spring into life immediately. Do be patient, wait a few seconds. Sometimes it takes a little while and there we go. Power supply is clicked on. We've now got some illumination around our chipset down here and also on the back of the motherboard as well. There's some nice RGB going on and we should see that the little LED, which if I turn that around a little bit more, you'll see it better. So we'll try and get some close-ups on that. So that is the, the speed it will flash when it's reading or kind of setting up. There should be three different states. So it will be flashing as it is now. Any second, it should start flashing a little bit faster. Then once it's done that, it will flash back to the original speed and then you should find the system should shut off. So leave it alone, let it do its own thing. This, like I said, should take somewhere in the region about five to six minutes. So set a timer on your watch and you should find out exactly how long it is. If it goes on way, way longer than that, then something has gone wrong. If for some reason the LED on there flashes maybe three or four times and then stops, basically doesn't do what it needs to do, you've done something wrong with either the flash file itself or the system just doesn't like your USB drive. So you might need to change, try and use a different USB drive. So we're gonna let it carry on do its thing and uh, fingers crossed it'll be a-okay. And there you go, you can see now the BOSS LED flashback button is now flashing fast. So that's the next part of it. If it doesn't get to this point in one or two minutes, maybe three minutes tops, then again, something is probably not worked out right and you probably need to start again. So we'll let that carry on and it should change speed again very shortly. And there we go, there is the next speed. So now it's slowed down a little bit. So that is a good sign. So it's done the kind of the, the wake up section, it's done the read and it's doing the write. So this should be the last part of it now. So again, this should take probably about another minute or so. So again, just be patient and uh, hopefully it'll work. And the light's gone out, so that's a good sign. I'm not sure whether or not the power supply... Oh yeah, there we go. So the power supply is clicked off and then the system's come back on again. And now we should find that we've still got the CPU LED there because obviously there isn't a processor installed. But yeah, that is pretty much it. That took a little bit longer than I was expecting, so I'm not too sure if there was some error correction going on there with the USB stick. But it appears to have done it. It did seem to be a little bit longer than usual for some reason, not sure. Maybe it's a beta BIOS and that is the reason why it does something slightly different. But anyway, it seems that each one of these BIOS flashes is just a little bit different from the last one. But anyway, that is gonna be it. Uh, at this point now, if you want to, you can install your CPU, install your RAM, put a cooler on, attach a VGA port or HDMI rather, or display port, that sort of thing. Just make sure you get an output before you do your full assembly if you haven't assembled it already. Uh, or if you obviously, if you have fully assembled it, now's the time to uh, test it all out and make sure it's all working. When you go in, make sure you obviously go into your BIOS, set things like your XMP settings, uh, secure boot if you're installing Windows 11 and all those other kind of things. There will be a full BIOS tour on this particular motherboard coming out shortly on the channel. So if you do want to see how to configure various settings and maybe tweak some of the settings for the uh, APU, so if you're maybe using an APU on one of these, then uh, that'll be coming out very shortly. So if you want to see how that goes, hit the subscribe button and the chime notification and you'll be notified for future video releases. I think this is going to pretty much wrap this one up. I'll be Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Oh, and if things go wrong, you can join our Discord. Thanks for watching.